Hi there, my name is Sandy and I am bringing you a watercolor powders series. This is number three in the series, so you may wish to go see number one or number two first. This video is going to present my way of labeling my brush -o bottles and I'm also going to talk about how to swatch out your colors and make a chart for yourself so you know what colors you have at hand. This video is primarily focused on brusho since it needs the most work to get the bottles ready to use. So I have the 24 and the 8 here. This is, I believe, the US packaging. There are also other types of packaging you can get, and I ordered a set of 12, and that came in a different box, but it's the same product. So if you get a different one, don't worry about it. If you get the 12, those colors are duplicated within the 24 pack. But the 24 and the 8 make up the entire 32 with no crossover and the 12 and the 8 can be used with no crossover but you don't want to cross over the 24 and the 12. Does that make sense? I hope so. I'm going to write it out on my blog just in case you forget or if it helps to read it in writing. So any of these boxes that you unbox come with a beautiful little flyer and the flyer lists out the colors. Those are somewhat accurate to what the colors are but not superbly. And here are the eight bottles from the eight pack. I'm gonna swatch out two things. I wanna use this hex shape to make myself a hex chart with spritzed powders. And I wanna do spritzed powders for a specific reason. And I'm using the fourth from the fourth shape from the smallest one because that's gonna fit this PDF that I posted on my website. It's a free PDF, so you can follow along and make your own hex chart if you have this die set from Lifestyle Crafts. I'm also gonna punch circles to put on the tops of my bottles, and those are gonna have solid color. It's gonna be painted with a brush, so I know what the solid color looks like as well as what the spritzed color looks like. And I'm gonna prepare for all of this by cutting a bunch of strips of one and three quarter inch paper and I've die cut a whole mess of these hexes. So they're going to be ready for my charts. I have another set of strips that have sticky on the back so you can use different products. I used here some Be Creative tape on the back so that I could make circles that are stickers to pop onto the top of each one of these in a certain order. Be sure to follow the way I say to do it because I did it wrong on a few of them and made a mess for myself. So you want to do, as I say, not as I started out doing, I want to save you some trouble. So I'm going to get all those punched out, and I also have some thumbtacks. I ended up getting clear ones after I got my 24 and my 8. I used white on the other ones you've seen in the other videos, but I wanted to write on the back first the color on the back of the hex chart piece. So I can match them up later with putting them in the right order. And then I wanted to punch a hole in the top. Now, I'm using thumbtacks. You can use a, a piercer. These bottles don't tend to leak a whole lot, but I left the, the little thumbtack in the tops of each of mine just because I want to make sure they don't spill out ever. The hole is so tiny, it's not likely to actually spill. But for me, it, it also made them so I can grab them real quick by that little, little thumbtack. Now, I'm going to do a quick spritz on the hex chart piece and then I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna leave it all, all mushy. And then after I'm, I have a little bit tapped out as well onto my work surface, and you want a work surface that you can get wet and that'll clean up really well, I have a little bit of the powder so I can take a clean brush. You want a super clean brush. Don't let yourself contaminate one color with another because when you're swatching out, you want them to be perfect. And so I'm just gonna put my my color on the top of the bottle. After it's dry, I'll repunch the hole through it and then add my tack back in. If you put water in and you have a hole there, you're gonna get water into your bottle potentially. That was one of the mistakes I made. <laughs> so do as I say, I'm, I'm trying to help you. And I'm using a magnetic uh, craft assistant from Ellen Hudson as my base here. You can also use a craft mat or something. You want something you can clean up really well in between every color. And don't have your extra pieces, all those extra white watercolor pieces, anywhere near where you're working because any stray powder that flies through the air is going to contaminate your future colors. And you don't want to have to redo any of this process because you've accidentally contaminated things. 
So I just went through every single color. I did a hex piece. I did the circle for the top, painted the color on, and then added my thumbtacks after it all dried. And cleaned my water. I actually changed my water between like every two colors because I didn't want to get any contamination going on. Here's the set of 24 and you can see they all nest beautifully in their little box. And once I got it all finished, this is what I ended up with. I'm looking for good storage. For now, I've got them in an envelope box and all 32 fit nicely in this. And you can see the little thumbtacks work great as handles to just grab one and pull it out and use it. And uh, I'm finding this works for the moment at least. I've uploaded all my swatch charts to my blog, including blank charts that you can print out on regular cardstock and then cut out your own hex shapes to add your own spritzed swatches to. And that's probably overkill for a lot of folks. You can print out my PDFs as well, but just know that the colors will be more accurate when you swatch it out yourself. This is the color burst set. And if you've watched the other videos in this series, these are the ones that are much brighter, much more intense than the, the brush -o colors. So if you like really, really bright, these are fabulous for you. They do come in a smaller bottle. These are the 12 set of brushos. And if you're going to just get into one set and you only want the one set, this is a good one. It's got a really good rounded rainbow of colors, but remember that this will be duplicated in the 24. So if you eventually think you may get the 24, I wouldn't go for the 12 so you don't get multiples. You can also buy them all individually though and totally save yourself the headache of trying to worry about duplicates. This is the set of eight. And I think what happened here is they had the set of 24 and these are fill-in colors, additional colors, but this would be a great set if you wanted to try them out and use it for Christmas cards because look at the reds and greens in there. So here we have the set of 24 and I'm just showing it to you with the, uh, the empty spaces for the eight that will fill in and then you have the full set of 32 brush -o colors. There is a white here. I don't know how to use it yet. I don't find that it works in the ways that I would think it does, but I will let you know as I discover more about them. Thank you so much for joining me for this series. If you liked it, please click the like button and feel free to watch one of the others in the series if you have not yet. And if you want to subscribe to get more videos on watercolor powders, I would love to have you come back again sometime. I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful day.